This is Skyrim. It looks beautiful. Here it is running on the 360. Um, it is a huge, epic fantasy game where you can be who you want and do whatever you want. We're really, really pushing the hardware. We've rewritten all the graphics, all of the gameplay uh, this go around. And we just want to fill a world with, with detail. All the little things, you can look at these plants. So micro detail, macro detail. You can walk to the top of that mountain. It's, if you've played our stuff, you know these are huge games that are wide open for you to explore and do what you want. We have a new animation system, so you can play in third person. Um, so some nice blending on the character. We that find is Dragonborn. That, that is, you can you know be whoever you want, uh, male or female. This is the character we're showing. Um, so a lot of people like to play in third person, so it's it's a real viable option this go around. Mm -hmm. As you, I mean, you've got you know wildlife. You've got I mean the, the yeah, world is really alive. Really, really alive. So we push for, um, and it, it's you are who you play. The right trigger does your right hand. The left trigger does your left hand. And so, as, as opposed to picking a character, you just be who you want, do what you want. So now I'm kind of being a battle mage, where the left trigger is casting this healing spell, and I can put that in any hand if I want. So right trigger, and then left you trigger. Healed spells, and you power What's up. What's cool I guess, is if you them? pull both triggers at the same time, you get a more powerful version of that spell. Now we're headed up high up into the mountains where it gets snowy to this wow. Nordic ruin. This is one of our over 150 dungeons okay. that we have in the game. And the ancient Nords used to worship dragons. So here we are inside the dungeon with our bow. We do have a lot of cool stealth gameplay as well. Uh -huh. So we really want to pay off on all of those different styles of gameplay, whether it's stealth, uh, melee, magic. Is this person is switching between first and, or in this playthrough first and third? Do you think a lot of people are going to play it that way? or? You know, I prefer first person myself, but right. I notice a lot of people just like to run around in third person. You can also dual wield swords. Okay, wow. Well. Actually, you can dual wield any, any one handed weapon. And you'll see me use a shout here. It's one of our magic powers you can do. There are a Using... lot of shouts throughout the game, right? These dragon shouts? Yep. And up here we're seeing the undead, the Draugr, who live in this uh, Nordic ruin. Using a flame spell in my left hand, sword in my right. And then another shout power. And these, how do you gain these shout powers throughout the uh, game? Uh, you'll see some of that uh, coming up, actually. But you, you learn the words, and then you have to unlock the ability to use them. So you, you learn these words of power in the dragon language. And the dragons in the game are a big feature, and when they're doing things, they're using the words as well. Okay. Uh, there are staves you can use to light um, areas of dungeons on our, our way out of this dungeon. Wow. We use water as a nice feature to guide you out sometimes as well. They have a new sort of story system in this too, right? A radiant story system? Radiant yeah. story that guides all of our quests um, to make it, since it is a big open game, um, to give us some more control over the experience you're going to have and make it more dynamic. Wow. Jones. Here we're out in the tundra, which is this wide open grasslands in the middle of Skyrim. Oh my god, I mean, it's a the brand mammoths. new engine, right? Yep, the creation yeah. engine that we built just for this game. So the mammoths, a lot of these creatures are peaceful unless you mess with them. Uh-oh, not a good idea. And you can also breathe fire like the dragons. That's one of the uh -huh. shouts okay. I'm going to use coming up here. Dragon breath. Aha. Uh -huh. dragon and dragons can attack oh, yeah. anything. They're okay. dynamic creatures. Um, we don't script them. So when we're playing the game, we don't know what they're going to do often. They are um, these big boss fights that are dynamic and interesting in ways that you know, we've never experienced in a game before. Now, I read a rumor online this week that the game is over 300 hours, or you can spend um, at least 300 hours in the game. There is at least 300 hours in it. We kind of have stopped counting. There's right. so much stuff um, in this game. Oh, and here's a, a battle with, with a non-friendly dragon. Kind of getting some help from the guards of this tower here. And then when they die, you absorb their souls, mm -hmm. and this allows you to unlock 
words of power, shouts that you've learned, and power them up. And then we also have fights in the game in times where there are multiple dragons. So here comes another one up there, a frost dragon. They're even more powerful than the, the dragon that I just defeated with the help of the guards. And what's cool about this game is, you know, dragons are not just going to come into the, you know, the final 10% of the game. I mean, you're going to see them throughout the game, right? They, they are creatures like any other, and you see them not from the initial get-go, but you see them throughout the game, yes. I was reading it, you, your character sort of starts this game, you're on, on your way to an execu your execution, is that true? You are being led to your execution. This is another shout there, Storm Call. So this calls a storm that brings lightning down to defeat your enemies, one of the more powerful shouts. And then once the dragons get hurt enough, they can't fly, and they'll either land or they'll crash. And how will your relationship with these dragons change throughout the game? I mean, obviously, there there's some that will be friendly to you. I don't want to quite spoil it yet, but they okay. all aren't out to destroy the world. And why they're back and what they want is part of the mystery of the, of the main quest in the game that you're going to uncover. Wow, very cool. Justine, are there any questions from fans for Todd? I have a question here from Jerry V on Facebook. Says, love the guilds in Oblivion. I wonder if the factions are going to return. Do you think it'll happen? Uh, we do have factions returning. Our three main factions um, are the College of Winterhold, which is like for the mages, the Companions, which is our warrior guild, and then the Thieves Guild, of course. Right. Very cool. And there's the beautiful Skyrim logo, and the date we know is going to be 11-11-11, which Absolutely. is uh, coming out in November. Uh, very cool. Justine? Any more questions? Uh, we, let's see, Player222 two, two on Twitter says, loving the new engine, can't wait to see more. Curious with how many environments they will have in Skyrim. There's a lot. It's another thing where we stopped counting. I mean, we have um, seven major different regions in the game. You've seen some of that where we get in the snowy mountains and pine forests and fall forests, that open tundra, right. lots of different dungeon types. I mean, we go at this each time trying to make the biggest, craziest role-playing right. game we possibly can and let people just do whatever they want.